This is the sixth in our series of videos looking at how we completed a basic setup and configuration of a Synology network attached storage device, or as they're more commonly referred to, a NAS. In our previous video, we reviewed the different file services that the disk station manager offers and decided to enable SMB. For this video, we will start the process for creating user accounts by first reviewing the user options offered in the DSM. As you can see here, we are still logged into the administrator's account and we are displaying the desktop. If we select Control Panel, then from within the File Sharing section, we locate User and select that option. We are shown a list of the default user accounts that were automatically created when we completed the initial setup of our NAS. At the top of the user panel, we have two tabs, user and advanced. We then have three buttons, create, edit, and delete. As we currently have not highlighted a user account, the edit and delete buttons have been greyed out. Next, we have three user accounts. As we've already mentioned, these three accounts were created when we completed the initial setup of our NAS. Admin is the default administrator's account that was present when we first installed and configured the DSM. You can see that this account is disabled. This is because as part of the configuration process, we decided to create our own administrator's account. This in turn automatically disabled the default administrator's account created by Synology. The account called Administrator is our newly created administrator's account and the account that we are currently logged in with. This account is the only account on our NAS that will allow us to make changes that affect other users, change all system settings, allow for the installation of software and allow us to install security updates. The administrator's account is currently the only active account on our NAS. The final account listed here is the guest account. As you can see in our example, this account has been set to disabled. Let's highlight the administrator account. When we highlight an account, all of the buttons become active, including the delete button. However, under no circumstances should you ever try to delete your administrator's account, for if you were to be successful in deleting the administrator's account, you would no longer be able to control your NAS. Let's select Edit and review the options that can be adjusted within a user's account. You can see that across the top of this window we have a series of tabs that include Info, User Groups, Permissions, Quota, Applications and Speed Limit. Within Info you can see that we have a field that will allow us to edit the name of the account. Next, we have the description field, which will allow us to label the user account. While this is a non-mandatory field, it can be useful to add an account description as it will help you remember why you created the account in the first place. As this is our administrator's account, which is used to control every aspect of our NAS, let's give the account the description System Administrator. The email field will allow us to associate an email address to this account. However, as we are building our NAS for use in a home network, we have decided to leave this field blank. The password field allows us to change the current password that we're using for this account. However, as this is the administrator's account, we don't want to lock ourselves out of our NAS, so we will not be adjusting this setting. You can see that the option Disallow the user to change account password, Password is always valid, and Disable this account are all greyed out. This is because the account we are currently reviewing is our administrator's account. When we start to create standard user accounts, these three greyed out options will become available for those new user accounts. User Groups currently consist of three default groups. 
administrators, which this account has been included in, HTTP, which is a default group for web services and by default this account has not been added to, and users, which all user accounts that we will be creating will have to be included in. Permissions allow us to define what shared folders this account is allowed to have access to, but as we have not yet created any shared folders for our NAS, we will be looking at permissions in more depth in a future video. Quota allows us to control how much storage space a user has access to on the NAS. As our NAS only has a finite amount of hard drive storage space, by using quotas, we can force our users to be more careful with what they store on the NAS. Applications lists the current applications or services that have been installed on our NAS. As this is only a default install of the DSM, we are currently only using the services Desktop, FTP, FileStation, Universal Search and RSync. From within this panel, we can control which applications this particular user can have access to, either via groups or on an individual basis using allow, deny or by IP address. The by IP address tick box will force a service to be only accessible via a specific account logged into a device using a specific IP address. Finally, Speed Limit allows you to restrict the amount of bandwidth that a user can use when they're working with file transferring services. This option is useful as a method of traffic control, where you can either limit the amount of bandwidth that a service can use, or you prioritize the bandwidth for one service over another. Let's select the OK button and save any changes that we have made to this user account. You can see that the description for the administrator's account has been updated. So to recap, in this video we reviewed the options within user and explained why the admin and guest accounts have been disabled. We then edited the administrator's account to add a description and took a look at the options that can be adjusted within a user's account. In the next video in this series, We'll be taking a look at the advanced user options and we will be more specifically looking at adjusting settings to improve user password security.